let me ask you a question. How irreplaceable do you think you are? Could someone just come to your workplace and pick up your job? What would you do? What would you do if tomorrow you were to be replaced by someone who's faster than you, more intelligent than you, who can do 100 times more work in the same amount of time as you for 1% of your pay? Welcome back to Plain Gibberish, and today we're going to talk about AI that can make humans obsolete. I work in marketing, which involves a lot more than what people usually think. Usually you think marketing manager or marketing specialist, you imagine someone, you know, posting on social media, sitting on Twitter all day, perhaps designing flyers and leaflets and banners, things like that. But much more than that goes into actual job of a marketer. You have database of customers that needs to be managed. You have customer lists and contact lists on all sorts of platforms that you need to manage. There is lots of data entry, data moderation and data deletion processes going into the role. Some marketers have their assistants who do this stuff and do the boring bits like posting media provided by your suppliers to your social media or perhaps managing your customer database. But the technologically switched on part of the industry uses something we call automations. There's plenty of softwares accessible to literally everyone. Anyone with a credit card and 20 pound a month to spare can start doing automations. And no, before you ask, no, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not even gonna mention any of the products that I use. If you're curious about them, you can ask about them in the comments, but this video is about something else. It's about the philosophical dilemma of replacing humans with robots. So back to the topic of automations, let's say you have a customer database with a few hundred clients that you're sending marketing emails to, and obviously some people opt out of marketing, so you need to remove them. Some people subscribe to your newsletter through your website, so you want to add them to your marketing list, to your customer database. Um, and obviously you acquire data in, in numerous ways by, you know, people ticking the boxes on your website or when taking order, you can ask if the customer consents to marketing. But all of that, as you can see, requires data entry. That customer needs to be added to your database. And normally for the last however many years marketing exists, like in a modern understanding of it, I would say, 70 to 100 years of you know someone sitting in an office crunching these things there would be someone assisting the marketing manager to enter all this data to manage all this data to crawl through the spreadsheets and before spreadsheets through physical documents lists of customers and that job is at the brink of extinction because it requires no creativity Data entry is a boring process that can easily be made redundant by robots. And this is exactly what uh, I've been doing uh, in my marketing experience. One of the first things I do is try to automate things because a process that doesn't need to be a process should be removed. Like, you know, you can have different opinions on, on Elon Musk, but us a very successful entrepreneur, he has one rule. A good part is no part. A good process is no process. So you can imagine if you connect that to a job of someone whose entire job purpose is to enter and remove data, which can be done very easily through automations and automating scripts, then what's the purpose of the job role? In the company I currently work for, we have influx of approximately three to 400 new mailing list subscribers per month. And normally entering 300 lines of Excel or perhaps back in a day on a paperwork, that would be someone's entire career, sitting in the office for eight hours and entering data and scratching out data. But I do it in two minutes using automation that 
doesn't cost even 5% of annual salary of average data entry employee. So that raises two questions. Who's next after data entry? And what happens to all these people who are gonna lose jobs this way? Because it's not a question of if, it's a question of when is your job going to be replaced by robots? I might be laughing at data entry jobs today, but tomorrow I will be laughed at as a marketer because AI is already getting there. There is software that allows you to turn articles into videos without ever filming a single frame of video, without ever recording a single second of voice track. There is software that allows you to write articles without writing articles. You just write a prompt and the AI spits it out for you. I'm using it myself and it's brilliant and scary because a few years ago, you would absolutely need a human being to write a product description for you, to write an advertisement for you. But what if one day AI can write an ad script, then turn that into a video using widely available assets? That makes me redundant. So whilst I'm using automations and AI myself, I just as well might be the victim of it in the next few years. So it's definitely something that should be talked about. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Jobs becoming redundant is just part of our civilization growing up, maturing. There is numerous jobs in a history that you can look up that have just become extinct. From the whole ice industry in the 1800s, ice industry was absolutely massive. If you wanted to preserve your food and you were rich enough to buy ice, you would have like whole rooms working as coolers, kind of. They were insulated and you would keep boxes full of ice in there and that would keep your produce cool and therefore keep it fresh for longer, just like refrigerators work. And as you can imagine, as soon as refrigerator was invented, the whole massive multi-million dollar industry has disappeared. Has disappeared without a trace. Nobody remembers about it today. Another example is knocker-ups, or knocker-uppers if you prefer. These were people who used to walk along the streets of cities and at 5 in the morning bang on the windows of workers who needed to get up to work with long sticks. They would just bang on their windows and serve as their morning alarm clocks. As soon as telephones got popular, their job was made redundant because you could do the same thing over the telephone, call someone in the morning to wake them up. And as soon as alarm clocks became widely available at low prices, the telephone wake-ups became redundant. It's natural progress of human civilization to leave redundant jobs behind and move on with time. So the question you should ask yourself is not if my job can be made redundant by robots and AI, but when is my job going to become redundant and how? can I protect myself from that in the future? What can I do? The most accessible solution to becoming redundant due to AI and automations is making sure that what you're doing cannot be replaced that easily by a simple script, simple robot, simple automation. So if your job is just about entering new rows in Excel or finding information in Excel or finding information about things and sending these things forward, I have bad news for you. But if your job requires creativity, such as writing for now, painting, taking pictures, taking videos, you should be safe. After all, even when all these products that I mentioned that might replace me in the future come to fruition, they will still need some sort of stock footage, some sort of stock videos, some sort of stock narrators to work off. So you can still find some sort of job in the future where you can sell your stock footage and stock videos and narrate products, perhaps make paintings. All the creative jobs will be difficult to be made redundant by AI. 
And what is more creative than services? Services such as plumbing services, electricians, barbers, cooks, emergency workers, police. These are jobs that not only require a level of creativity that for now AI cannot provide, but also require public trust. Think about it this way. Would you trust a robot to clean shave you with a razor? Put a razor next to your throat? Would you trust that the servos are properly oiled? That the machine has been serviced? I wouldn't. I had this very conversation with a barber I'm using and he thinks it's gonna be wildly available in forms of automated machines at airports where you can get like stock haircuts and I think it could be possible in a 10-15 years time but I still think majority of people would be too scared and rightfully so to use machine service for something as close to the bone as a shave. So definitely services and creative jobs should be somewhat safe. And once you have this creative element in you, it shouldn't be that difficult for you to switch between jobs. Because for example, if you become a photographer and somehow this becomes redundant due to AI, you can always switch to videography. It's very similar in nature. Or if you become a plumber, and if somehow we have robotic Super Mario Bros running around the city, you can always, you know, change your skills to become an electrician. I'm not saying it's exactly the same cup of tea, but it requires the same type of creative thinking and problem solving. So if you want to make sure you're safe from being replaced by a robot, just make sure you're not choosing a career path that is designed to be replaced. That would be all from me. I hope you enjoyed this bit of a doom and gloom. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you wish to hear more of my soothing, doom, profiting voice. <laughs> and well, at this point, it's just plain gibberish. See you next time.